Okay, so let us take a question today on consolidated financial statements. And what we deal here is basically your cross holdings. What happens is that in some cases, till now what you have been looking at is you had a situation where you had a holding company which was owning shares in a subsidiary. 55%, 60%, 70%, and so on. What can also happen is that in some cases, the subsidiary may also hold shares in its parent. Let's say it holds 5%, 10%, 30%. Now, in such a case, when you prepare the consolidated financial statements of the holding company, you need to consider as to how to make an adjustment in the profits of each of these entities. Because what will happen is that H will have some part of ownership in the share capital and the profit of S. Similarly, S would also have some part of profits or share capital of H. So therefore, the issue which comes up for you is how do you kind of cancel out these intercompany kind of transaction. So let us take one problem on this thing. So we are told that the balance sheet of H limited and its subsidiary S limited drawn up as on 31st March 2011 are as under. Prepare consolidated balance sheet of H limited. So there is a company called H Limited, there is a company called S Limited. H Limited is the holding company and S Limited is the subsidiary. We have the details of various items like equity share, profits earned prior to acquisition, profit and loss account revenue, other liabilities, then stock, debtors, investment. Well, what we note here is that H Limited holds 3000 shares in S Limited. And simultaneously, even S Limited holds 2000 shares in H Limited. So whenever you get these kinds of questions, the first thing that you should see is, which is the holding company and which is the subsidiary company? Well, in this particular case, the advantage that you have is that they have already told that H Limited is the parent company and subsidiary is S Limited. And you have to prepare the balance sheet of H Limited. So maybe let us start and prepare this balance sheet. Now please note the golden rule of accounting. The golden rule of accounting says that whenever you are preparing a balance sheet, a consolidated balance sheet, the golden rule of accounting has to be remembered, which is that every debit, every debit has a corresponding and equal credit. Now you must be wondering, this is not what we have learned. This is now how we prepare the consolidated financial statements. But what is the relevance of this? The relevance of this is that you know, when you get these two balance sheets to start with, their totals are equal. So as you move each item out of this balance sheet, you should kind of ensure that you are getting an equal debit for this. Okay, now let me show you what I mean by this. Let's say forgive me for these lines, okay. Balance sheet of H Limited as on 31-3-2011. Okay. So the first item was stock. Stock is 4,20,000 for H and 1,60,000 for S. So I write stock H. 4,20,000 
is how much was this? One lakh sixty thousand. There is no adjustment here, so I do a sum of these two, and I get five lakh eighty thousand of stock. Done. Now, do I need to do anything to these numbers? I guess no. So whenever this is the case, I mean, you can use either a sketch pen or a normal pen, and you just put in a small tick here. This means that the number has moved out from here. So what happened? I had an asset of four lakh twenty thousand and one lakh sixty thousand, which was the debit side. Corresponding to this, I had in the consolidated balance sheet four lakh twenty thousand and one lakh sixty thousand on the debit side. So five eighty has come here. What does it imply? This implies that the debit aspect, which was available to me here, is completed in this. Let's move on to the next one. Debtors three lakh eighty thousand, two lakh. So I write down debtors three lakh eighty thousand for H, two lakh for S. I do a sum of these two. I again get five lakh eighty thousand. Okay. I'm just moving out the easier one first, and then we'll kind of move on to the next one. Investments. Now this is where the crucial things comes in, but this we will take once we are done with the smaller part of it. So other liabilities: one lakh fifty thousand and forty thousand. Other liabilities: one lakh fifty thousand. I do a sum of these two. I get one lakh ninety thousand here. Done. Okay. Very good. And these are just creating confusion, so I'm just removing them. So I am done with these adjustments. Now this is what I am left with. Now, H Limited has acquired subsidiary S Limited. Okay. So what happens is that some part of profit of S Limited, which is this plus this, so some part of these profits belong to H Limited. Okay. Now how much is that? Well, I really don't know. So I put in some stuffs here. Now what is it? How much does H Limited holds in S Limited? H Limited holds three thousand shares. It's given here. And what is the total share capital of S Limited? It is four lakh, and each share is of hundred. So four lakh. So four lakh when divided by hundred gives me four thousand. So the total share capital of S is equal to four thousand. And S holds three thousand shares out of it, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three. Three fourth of shares of S. Okay. So what does H owns? H owns basically, you know, the profits which it has earned on its own, right? Suppose you know. Let us take it this like this. So profits. Whose balance sheet are we preparing? We are preparing the balance sheet of H Limited. Okay, profits. So there are revenue profits, which is one lakh fifty thousand. So H Limited has one lakh fifty thousand of profits. Right, but some part of profit of S. As you must have been doing in your earlier questions, also, is also belonging to H. And how much of that profit belongs to H? How much of that profit belongs to H? It's three fourth. Why? Because it holds three fourth of the shares. Right. So it can be said that 
the profits let's see it here profits of h is equal to 150000 which is nothing but its own profit plus 3 fourth of profits of s why because it owns 3 fourth of shares of s okay but what are the profits of s do i know the profits of s well let me see the profits of s are the revenue profits are 60000 but is it this simple no why because s also holds certain shares in h limited right so this 60000 just like we are increasing the profit of h we should also increase the profit of s proportionately and what is the share of s s holds 2000 shares so s out of 8000 shares these 8 lakh divided by 100 will give you 8000 or 1 upon 4 of shares of h so s owns one fourth of shares of h so therefore one upon four into h should also be equal to the profit of s right so now we have reached a situation wherein we know that you know there is a cross tangling remember those algebraic equation that you used to do in your mathematics in your school so this has become something like this now just like we used to do there what we will do is we will kind of equate the value of this so i can also write this as 60000 plus 1 upon 4 into h what is the value of h h is equal to 150000 plus 3 upon 4 into s okay now the only thing you need to do is solve this equation 60000 plus 150000 divided by 4 3 7 5 double 0 plus 1 by 4 into 3 by 4 s will give you 3 upon 16 s so s move this to the other side minus 3s upon 16 is equal to 97500 so you put in this as 16s divided by 16 or 13s is equal to 97500 into 16 which means that s is equal to 97500 into 16 divided by 3 this becomes one lakh twenty thousand 